Welcome back. In case you have trouble writing the draw bullet function definition, let me go through another function that is similar and that might help you uh, work through that exercise. So uh, as you recall, in order to make this interactive game, we need at least two functions, one to draw a world and also one to change the world as time passes. So before we have to move the invaders down and now we need to at least take a world, which is a structure that contains the invader and the player and the bullet and move the invaders down. So let's write that function. Let's start with the signature and uh, we're gonna call it, uh, maybe we'll call it tick because there's a whole bunch of things that uh, are going to have to change when time passes, when we make the game more complete. It's going to be a function as always that takes a world as input and returns the next world after a fraction of a second passes. So uh, update the world as time passes. Um, so here's a simple header for the function. Okay, let's think about what happens as time passes and the world um, should change. We can use the example world that we had before to help us think this through. It will be easier for us to see that if I move this design up to where we have the data definition and world examples. So that will be here. So let's work here. What should happen when the world is PS280B1? What should happen when the world is W1 and time passes? Well, PS2 has some invaders. They should move down. The player is at 80 and it should still be at 80. B1, again, is no bullet, so it should still be no bullet. Okay, so the result of tick should just be, I'm gonna use move invaders, a function that we previously defined to write this example, in fact, because we kind of know that move invaders is tested, the design is finished, so I can use that function in this example. And similarly, what should happen when W2 is a current world and time passes? Well, in that case, PS1 is the list of invaders that should move down. The player is still at 100, but because this time we have a bullet in B2. What is B2? B2 is make pause in 70, 50. So that bullet has to move up. So we should say here in this example, how that bullet should move up. Maybe I'm just guessing the bullet should move up by five. So the X coordinate should continue to be 70, but the Y coordinate maybe should become 45, let's say, and that will be moving up. Okay, so these are examples of tick. What template should we use? Well, this function is gonna process the world. So we already have this template right here. We've used the same template to write draw world. Now we're gonna use it to write tick. So I'm gonna rename process world to tick and then take a look at the template's suggestions. The template says, why don't you take the invaders, which is a list of posits, and process it? Well, yeah, we already have the function to process it. It's called move invaders. The template says, why don't you use the player position? Well, yeah, we use the player position by keeping it and not changing it. The template says, why don't you take the bullet and then do something to it? Well, here that matches what the examples tell us to do. The examples tell us, well, you probably want to have a new bullet location. Let's wish for a function called move bullet. The other day, you know I had a wish sandwich. Well, a wish sandwich is the kind of a sandwich where you have two slices of bread and you wish you had some meat, ball, ball, ball. Let's wish for a function called move bullet. It's gonna take, let's say, I'm just wishing here. 
a maybe parson that's a forward and return another maybe parson. So if this is the current maybe parson, this is going to be the new bullet location. Or maybe there's no bullet, it will be a maybe parson nevertheless. And now we notice that the examples, both examples, use make world. So we could just finish this function by using make world to fill in the rest of the dots. So that's it for tick, but we're not done yet because in the process of designing tick, we have wished for a function move bullet. Update the bullet as time passes. So how should this function be written? Well, we should use the examples of tick to write examples of move bullet. In the first example for tick, it turns out that b1, which is inside w1, should become b1, should stay b1. So we write this example for move bullet. In the second example for tick, it turns out that b2 should become this positive. So we write this example for move bullet. As you can see, every example for tick gives us a corresponding example for move bullet. So we're not really being very creative when we write the examples for move bullet. We're just deriving those examples from our wish. Now we move on to the template step, step four. How are we going to write a template for move bullet? Well, we already have the template because we're going to process a maybe parson. So let's just grab our template for a function that processes a maybe parson. And rename it from process maybe parson to move bullet. Now we could use the examples and the template to write the definition. In the non case, we have an example that's B1. It looks like we just need to return the same bullet that we had. In the parson case, we have an example for that too. That's B2. The template says, why don't you use the X and Y fields of the input bullet B? So in our example, where B is B2, X would be 70 and Y would be 50. The 70 is good because the bullet doesn't need to move horizontally, but to get from 50 to 45, we should subtract 5. So now we have a formula for 70 and a formula for 45, and all we need to do is to notice that we also need to use make posin to put these two numbers back together into a Posin, which is also a maybe positive, which is the new bullet. When we run this program, which we should do as often as possible, not only do the test for move bullet pass, the test for tick also pass. Now we have both a function for tick and a function for draw world. So we're actually ready to make another slightly less boring game. Let's make a big bang. Let's start with the world w1, let's say, and use for the to draw handler draw world, which you just helped design by designing draw bullet, and also use for the on tick handler the tick function that we just made. Let's see what happens. Well, you can see that there's a player at the bottom of the screen now, and the invaders are still falling down. That's if we use W1 as our initial world. Remember, W1 doesn't have a bullet in it. Let's change that to W2, which does have a bullet in it, and watch closely what happens to that bullet. I hope you saw that there was a green bullet flying up. Now we have a game with three things in it. A list of invaders, a player, and a bullet which may or may not be a positive. What's missing? What's left to do?
there are at least three things left to do. First, we need to be able to move the player left or right, and we need to be able to shoot a bullet. So for that, we need to design a new function, which is going to handle key events, because moving and shooting will be done through the keyboard. Another thing that needs to happen is that sometimes bullets and invaders need to interact. Sometimes we need to remove invaders because they've been hit. Sometimes we need to remove a bullet because either it has just hit an invader or because it has flown off the top of the screen without hitting an invader. So for those features, we need to update our function tick so that in addition to moving invaders and the bullet, it would also sometimes remove invaders and the bullet. Finally, we need a way to stop the game. Sometimes the game is over because the invaders have landed. Sometimes the game is over because the invaders are gone. Either way, we need to detect that it is the end of the game by designing a new function that returns a boolean, true or false. These are the three things that we need to do to finish the game, and we will do these things in the next lecture.